Russia deceitfully mobilizes Russians and migrants for war in Ukraine. The Russian Federation is enticing migrants, as well as its own citizens, to the front lines to fight against Ukraine by promising false employment opportunities, according to the ISW. Specifically, the Russian Ministry of Defense is coercing Russian citizens and migrants into Russian military service through false employment opportunities. They are promised fake contracts with a one-time payment of 405,000 rubles or approximately $4,400. The Russian Ministry of Defense immediately sends individuals recruited under false contracts to fight in Ukraine. These schemes of false employment opportunities target citizens of Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, India and Congo. Earlier, President Vladimir Putin signed a decree that speeds up a path to Russian citizenship for foreigners who enlist in the country's military amid the war in Ukraine. Those immigrants who signed a contract for at least a year and take part in active hostilities for at least six months were allowed to apply for citizenship without demonstrating sufficient knowledge of Russian or the fact that they lived in the country for five straight years under a residency permit. Spouses and children were also eligible to apply. Authorities were obliged to decide on such applications within three months according to a presidential decree at the time, Russia is misleading foreign civilians into combat roles by advertising well-paid non-combat positions. This global recruitment effort targets economically vulnerable nations such as Nepal and Central Asian countries to strengthen its forces. According to a UK defense ministry, Russia is using financial incentives to attract foreign recruits and additional benefits like free medical care, training and Russian citizenship. This strategy likely aims to minimize domestic backlash by reducing the need for further mobilization within Russia. It is likely that many of those that have been recruited are not professional soldiers but migrant workers and have been coerced to fight under false pretenses or with the offer of financial incentives. The numbers of foreign nationals in the Russian armed forces are likely to be low and integrated into established rather than special units. Wagner mercenaries in Belarus train drone operators for war in Ukraine. Mercenaries from the Wagner private military company in Belarus are training drone operators for the Russian army. Although they do it reluctantly, as they are paid little for it, according to the monitoring group Belaruski Hayun and the Center for National Resistance, Wagner private military company instructors in Belarus are training mobilized military personnel for topography, artillery, medical training, organization of management, and communication for two weeks. The main focus of the two-week courses is on mastering drone operator skills, including FPV drones. After such crash courses, off to war in Ukraine, the Resistance Center report says. However, as the partisans note, the instructional work and salary do not suit the Wagner's fighters, and there is a leakage of instructors in Belarus who choose to participate in the war in Africa, where they are paid more. According to the National Resistance Center, the number of Wagner's fighters in Belarus has decreased from 500 to 400 over the recent period. As noted by the monitoring group Belaruski Hayun, in April 2024, Belarus conducted a readiness check which became the most extensive in Belarus's history. During this month, Belarusian military received a second batch of four Mi-35M helicopters from Russia. In total, there are already eight such helicopters at the Mashulishchi airfield. It is planned to increase their number to 12. The aviation group of the Russian Aerospace Forces has increased by one fighter jet over the month. At the same time, the strength of the Russian armed forces in Belarus has remained unchanged. The Russian military contingent continues to be in the same locations as before. In addition, the number of Wagner PMC mercenaries in Belarus remains low. They are notably involved in training the forces of Alexander Lukashenko's regime. It is worth noting that Russia has turned Belarus into a training ground for its troops, which are sent to the front lines in Ukraine. At the same time, NATO has confidentially outlined red lines for its intervention in the war in Ukraine. According to one of the scenarios, this could happen in case of a possible breakthrough in northwestern Ukraine if this would create a corridor between Ukraine and Belarus and then Minsk would be directly involved in the war. Ukrainian defense forces have eliminated another 1,400 Russian militaries in the past day, bringing the total losses of the enemy's army in personnel since the start of full-scale invasion to approximately 485,430 soldiers. Additionally, 
Ukrainian troops destroyed one aircraft and 11 enemy tanks, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. But although this, this morning, the Russian invasion forces stormed the settlements of Staromayersk, Krynky, and Robotyne but Ukraine's troops are firmly holding their ground. That's according to Dmitro Pletenchuk, chief of the Stratcom Center with Defense Forces South, who spoke on the air of the National Telethon, Ukrainform reports. This morning, they stepped up their efforts at all three of our locations, Staromayersk, Krynky, and Robotyne. There was one assault in each of those areas this morning but no positions were lost, Pletenchuk said. He added that yesterday, the enemy made 12 attempts to storm Staromayersk and 4, Krynky. According to Pletenchuk, the enemy combat losses in the past day was nearly the same as over the previous day, but the ratio of irreversible losses has tripled. That is, the intensity of the fighting was higher, although there were fewer assaults, he noted. The head of the Strategic Communications Center added that in the last two days, the enemy did not try to storm the island of Nestriha and that yesterday, the Russians focused their efforts on the settlement of Krynky. Over the past day, as Pletenchuk noted, the enemy attacked Ukrainian positions using unguided air missiles launched from a helicopter, which yielded no results for the adversary. The Russians also launched a ballistic missile, likely an Iskander, targeting an administrative building in Kherson. Over the past day, the enemy shelled settlements along the right bank of the Dnipro, where one civilian was killed. According to the official, both sides are actively employing drones and e-warfare systems. Every day, we see hundreds of drones swarming from both sides, and EWs are used by both sides, too. Our units also have appropriate cover, Pletenchuk said.